Y'all may not know this, but Senator Cardin is here in Frederick today. Yeah. His office asked Sheriff Jenkins to attend an event, but our sheriff declined. He said it's more important to be here among the people like him. I say to Washington that we the people are not to be forgotten anymore. Statism is the doctrine of giving a centralized government extensive reign on economic, political, and related controls at the cost of individual liberty. If this sounds familiar, then you know. We have enemies within. These enemies have infiltrated our party system, our labor unions, and our nonprofits. Around the country, they have infiltrated our state and local governments, our state legislators, our city councils, and local boards of education. They have infiltrated our United States Congress, our federal government agencies, and specialized posts directly appointed by our executive branch. I would venture to say that many of these people don't even know what their participation and actions are producing. But there are many more that do know and are actively working towards systematically revamping our nation. These are the individuals that make such statements. As our president did as a candidate in October 30th of 2008, his proclamation was, and I quote, we are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. You want that? The American sleeping giant has finally awoken partly because of these arrogant and blatant statements made in public by the radical proponents of statism. This is why we are here. This is why we are compelled to gather together the message of the Tea Party is of our liberties and what we must do to recapture them. The TEA acronym has come to be identified with taxed enough already. I would like to suggest a new meaning for the T acronym. Tyranny exists already. Don't confuse my words with hyperbole. To do so would be a great folly and would play right into the hands of our opponents. Tyranny does not always show a familiar face of guillotines and firing squads. Sincere humanitarian concerns that are continuously acted upon for the good of the people at the expense of their liberty will only lead us down the path towards happy face tyranny. It is our civic duty to root out these acts and hold them up high for all to see. As Edmund Burke said, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men and women do nothing. Hate crimes bills, cap and trade legislation, federal wiretapping of citizens, increased social programs. I ask you, where does it stop? It doesn't. It won't. If we do not fight for our liberty now, I see a time in the not too distant future when we will look back and say, is the material comfort and superficial security I have really worth the overbearing regulation and burdensome rules I am forced to live by? Let me remind you something that Benjamin Franklin said so many years ago. They who would give up an essential liberty for temporary security deserve neither liberty or security. If we do not reverse the federal government's rapid usurpation of power, we will have neither security nor liberty. We will experience a tyranny of Nazi in our lifetimes. Washington must stick to the restricted authority that we the people consented to in our Constitution. And our damn state government officials need to do their job and stop the monsters in Washington 
from stealing power not granted to them. We would be wise to avoid constantly referring to the current environment as communism, socialism, Marxism. This is how the other side marginalizes us, because the average American is still not plugged in and does not understand what's occurring. What we're experiencing is social democracy. Social democracy is the use of democratic means to achieve a gradual transition from capitalism to socialism. People, we're in a period between republic and pick your ism. So you ask, who is the enemy within? Who's the problem? It is the deceptive radicals, these statists. They are the radicals. They are the extremists. They are ultimately our oppressors. Those of us who are saying enough is enough are not trying to stop anyone from succeeding. We are solely and uniformly declaring that we don't want our country fundamentally transformed. We are not opposed to progress, we are opposed to what progress means to the radicals. I say today, that is, and it marks a defining moment, this is the day that we thought stopped throwing around the loose term liberal. That term may encompass the extremist statists, but it also includes so many people that don't fit into the real problem group. Think about it. It includes those who simply don't want to be labeled selfish or intolerant. Those who have well intentions and just want to help people. The list goes on. But most of them are the result of the problem, not the root cause. The root cause is the extremists who began this ball rolling at the beginning of the 20th century and to continue to push progressivism under the guise of liberalism. We must be specific to call out the right people. Those people who we are in opposition to must now be properly referred to as progressive radicals. <laughs> Sides are being drawn. And if we do not begin distinguishing the correct enemy now, we will forever be marginalized, and that will lead to their ultimate victory. However, I have faith in this movement coming out in the rain. I have faith in you. I know we can make this important distinction and I know we will win! In Germany, they first came for the communists. And I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. And then, they came for the trade unionists. And I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. And then, they came for the Jews. And I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. And then, they came for me. And by that time, there was no one left to speak up. And so I promise you, I will not be inactive. I will not stay silent. I will stand up. I will speak up. Because for me and my prosperity, there will be liberty.